I think that was. You know, I, yeah, it's hard wasn't to tell. It? Okay, it is 7 p.m. I will call the April 13th, 2021 uh, board meeting to order. And I would ask. Trusty Bingham. Here. Trusty Duncan. Here. Trusty Grundon. Here. Here. Okie dokie. I would ask everybody to remove your hats and please stand for the national. I think you were right, Chief. I should do your breathing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. It stands one nation. It is a liberty, justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Okay, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda, which was made up of A, meeting minutes from the 9 March 2021 board meeting and the vouchers, payment of bills, journal entries, etc. Do I have a motion? Duncan moves. Second. Duncan. Second by Bingham. Bingham. Okay, discussion. Anybody wish to pull one of the things from the agenda for further discussion? Request all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That motion passes unanimously. Okay, public agenda, uh, comment on agenda items. Um, I presume the three gentlemen in the back are here for item number uh, 7B from the uh, CERT committee to revisit the table motion to approve resolution 2021-01, a resolution leveling a flat special assessment. Is that correct? And if you want to speak now and then forever hold your peace, or do you want to save a comment when we bring that item up? They all said no, now, sir. They all said no. Right all said no? Oh, there it is. You should have put it here. <laughs> Okay, um, let's see. So be it. Uh, okay, we'll get right into the committee reports. Um, yeah, President's report. Pardon? President's report. <coughs> Sorry about that. First time. Uh, no President's report tonight because I want to get to our guests on 7A sub paragraph. You're doing well as Vice President. Just don't interrupt me again, son. All right, number seven. A subsection one special attendee topping. Mr. Bosser. Uh Board and uh, trustees uh, and guests. We have uh, Mr. Joe Moore from DMI and I believe Greg Jewell. Are you still on the line? He's muted. I am. So, uh, we have Mr. Jewell. I'm on the line. Major uh, uh, construction consultant, I'll call it. Uh, for DMI. Uh, Mr. Moore uh, wanted to have some time on your all schedule to give you guys an update. In your packet is a is a uh, one-page Excel sheet that lays out very simply the, uh, the progress we have made and pluses and minuses uh, or positives and negatives as well as what's trending up or down. So you can reference that as Mr. Moore speaks and then I will turn it over to Mr. Moore. Thank you, uh, Boz. I appreciate it. Um, first off, I'd like to thank the board for uh, allowing <coughs> to speak. Um, Boz and I have been working uh, or meeting on a weekly basis, discussing the issues before us to get this, the Port Edwards uh, project to where it needs to be um, and at least get some progress. Um, we had another setback in the lawsuit in that uh, we were supposed to go to trial in February and we were ready to go to trial, but the opposing side was not ready, said that their witnesses were not allowed to travel. So we offered to allow them to appear via Zoom. The um, uh, judge decided that he wanted to move it out to September. So we are moved back to the September, although we are doing a, a few things to um, move some things along. So we have already committed 
a half a million dollars in rail yard improvements for this year. Um, those are starting as we speak, um, which will also include the improvement across Highway 74 in conjunction with ERCO. So um, we're starting with obviously what's um, in dire need of repair first, um, upgrading some of the rail, upgrading a whole lot of the switches um, and tons and tons and tons of ties. So um, that's moving forward. Um, we are in the process of uh, with Boz and I with working with the DNR to get an assessment of the property to see if we can find some state funds to help us maybe with that boiler house, which is the whole bone of contention in the lawsuit. Um, although, you know, there may be some issues with being able to touch it. So we want to see what the DNR is going to come back with. I've also got, um, I've got our attorneys out of uh, Milwaukee working on the, um, working on the association documents to finish those up so that each tenant that buys or leases in the facility is paying their fair share of the upkeep and maintenance on the property. Um, I think my guy's been there. Well, I know my guy's been there all year and I haven't had anybody come and say that we're not keeping the grass cut or the weeds down or uh, I think we had a little bit of an issue with uh, getting some snow moved and um, but um, the village was able to help us and we were very gratified to, for that. Um, we're also looking at, you know, that, that TIF is going to be expiring soon. And so we're looking at how we might be able to um, utilize some of those funds to maybe do like the river walk or something that will uh, be a community available use. Um, and if we can figure out how to do that, um, we've already committed that we will deed um, or, or the access to all of that um, once it's all complete, of course, at our expense to the village so that that could be tied back to hopefully a cross filtration road and back to Highway 74's bike path. So that would be a nice little trip to be able to take between the hydro and the mill and around the back and along the river and back out on the filtration road. That'd be a nice little walkway area. We're going to put some benches and some other things there. Um, but that, that, that would be our intention. Um, you know, we desperately want to get the demolition done um, so that we can get the, <clears throat> building, the large mill building repurposed. Um, but we're also looking at possibly doing some um, major improvements to the, um, the data center building. Um, and um, I'm working with a banker right now to facilitate that. So um, we've got some interest in the old um, Alliant building, which is the building in the wedge um, that has the garage doors on it. So we've got some interest in that. And then we've got some interest in the two residential lots um, on the north side of, um, hmm, on the north side of the, of the data center. Um, so with that, I'll throw it out to open up any questions anybody would like to present to us. Um, you know, we feel like we're back, back in the saddle, back on track with the village that we have common interests to get done and, and common things that we want to have happen. Um, and we're looking at a whole lot of different aspects of how to do that and still stay um, within compliance of making sure that we um, don't destroy evidence for the lawsuit. Questions for Mr. Moore, board members. Joe, you lucked out. Almost nobody wanted to say anything except me, and you know me. I like to. <laughs> I, 
just have a comment to make that I'm, I'm very, very pleased uh, since uh, Colonel Bosser got here that the uh, discussion between DMI and the village of Port Edwards have really picked up, sir. And uh, one of our first meetings way back in uh, July of 1917, 19, 2017, uh, it was a little not heated meeting, but we were kind of just generally trying to figure out where everybody stands. And I, I told you that the only thing I hope is that you won't break my heart. So I'm proud to announce four years later that uh, I'm very happy to where things are right now. And hats off to Boz and hats off to Mr. But you still have uh, Thank you for that. Um, and we, we appreciate that. Um, again, you know, it's been four years, you know, I don't want this recorded, but it's been four years of hell for us. And fighting this insurance company that just has more money and they got brains. But um, we, we still feel very confident uh, going forward. And there's, from, from my opinion, there's a, there's, there's a reason they keep wanting to move the trial date. Because after the trial date, I'm, I'm afraid they're going to have to sign a check. So uh, having said all that, we're not going to let that get in, in the way of Boz and I uh, moving anything forward that we can possibly move forward without destroying evidence. Appreciate that, Joseph. Thank you. Okay, Boz. Uh, that's all. There's a, obviously a motion later in the, the meeting here that I'll have a recommendation, but uh, <coughs> working well together. They've, uh, they've cleaned up a lot of uh, past due business with payments to the village. So I appreciate that greatly. And uh, we'll continue to work towards the negative column and try to address those. But as you see, most of them are tied to the lawsuit, but there are some that we can definitely make some effort on when it comes to marketing uh, and so on. Uh, so we're, we're gonna put our energies there as we move forward. So. Okie dokie. Thank you very much. Moving on, Boz, would you take your well? Yeah, I got an announcement to make about the airport commission. And then uh, if you would take the review of the proceedings of their last meeting. Sure. Um, Mrs. Katie Martinson tendered her resignation as our airport representative uh, this past week. And uh, I've been in communication with Boz. And uh, since I served on that for two years before I became president and then appointed Katie to do that, I am going to resume as the airport commissioner, um, and it was well received by the other three members because we have some uh, municipal juris, not jurisdiction, but municipal items that we, we, we need to talk over. I do not figure to be in that position. In fact, I would like to have somebody, and I'm, I'm pointing to Boz uh, at this point, uh, to take that over when September comes. I, but uh, the four months in the, in the meantime, uh, talking to Mayor Blazer and to uh, Chairman uh, Nordstrom and to Brad Hamilton, the CUSA's representative, uh, just be patient with me. I just got some things that we got to basically got to be brought up to speed as to where what's, you know, happened over the last four years. And there's a few issues out there that I can't really speak on now, but I have to get filled in for them. But you will all know about those two. It just has to do with buildings. So. That's all I have to say, Paz. Uh, as you see, the uh, minutes are attached. Uh, a lot of just housekeeping on their part with some uh, construction going on. Uh, if you're not aware, the airport hangar is being utilized as a uh, vaccination site. So they're fully engaged there. For a lot of our community members are going there for uh, daily shots. But uh, no real issues right now we're working with as we work with the committee. Uh, we're still going to resurface the range road discussion uh, or there at least that possibly their assistance with that moving forward. Uh, but that's really the only hot topic that we're talking about with the airport commission. That's all I have. Questions? Okay. Uh, item C, uh, one and two, plan commission met on 22 March, 2021. Uh, Boz or Dana, have anything to add to that? Uh, I don't think Dana was part of the planning. 
Pardon? Dana was a part of the planning commission this, this time. Oh, uh, right, right. So, uh, yeah, so you see the minutes from the planning. It was a specific uh, discussion concerning rezoning of the entirety of the mill pro uh, property to a PUD status. Uh, members met, citizens were involved. There was a good dialogue we had here. Unanimous votes to approve the uh, rezoning. What I would ask, however, is that uh, this motion specifically be tabled. There's some administrative paperwork I need to work with Mr. Moore on to uh, clean up our end of the house. So I would ask I need about 30 days and then uh, nothing against the motion, nothing against the approval. It's just we need, I want my ducks in a row before uh, you all vote on this. So I would ask someone make that motion. Okay, uh, according to this brand new book of Robert's Rules of Order, since the presiding officer uh, uh, goes through and leads through the uh, agenda, uh, we've all heard your reasons why, and uh, we don't have to really technically table it. We will remove the motion. And you said 30 days, so we can sure. bring that back in May? That's perfect, yes. Okay, thank you. All righty, <clears throat> moving on to Chairman Mitchell, streets and infrastructure, please. Oh, uh, yes, sir, Mr. President. Uh, we met on March 16th. And probably the biggest issue we discussed is the special assessment um, proposal. That was a lengthy discussion with a lot of input from those that were in attendance, um, citizens from the village. Uh, we had an up, well, we had a short discussion on separating public works from parks and recreation and dividing that into two separate committees and the committee was uh, in agreement with that. So the president will take that forward. We will be voting on that next Tuesday. Okay. And the Easter egg hunt was announced. Um, Public Works been announced uh, that all is going well with the final estimates for the Third Street um, project this summer. Um, also, a contract has been put out for the splash pad shelter that is going to be built that will start in May and two summer helpers are returning and I think one new candidate. Am I right? Sure. Okay. On that. Um, we had also received uh, one letter in correspondence who supported the vehicle registration tax. Um, that summarizes our meeting. And now we need to go forward with a motion that was tabled at the last board meeting um, to approve the resolution number 2021-01. Joe, do we want to read that again or do you nope, want to? You, you announced it in the motion to approve and the second was made last month. So Correct. we just pulled her back until tonight. So we're going to pick up right where we left off. And I'm kind of old, so I can't remember where we left off. Did any of you guys remember? Uh, Boz? What you see included in your packets is a, it's a cut and paste. It's the exact resolution. There's no amendments. There's no adjustments. Uh, so it, it's uh, you heard the discussion. Since then, we had some more uh, uh, citizen involvement at the CERT committee. Uh, uh, Ms. Mitchell covered it. There was uh, basically a... a a movement forward that rather than uh, propose any adjustments at that time, that uh, as written, this would be presented tonight uh, for you all's uh, uh, vote or discussions. Nothing to add unless you have a specific question about the, the numbers again or whatnot. So. Okay, um, without objection, I'll suspend the rules for this issue. So trustees talk at will. And those in the gallery, even though you said you did not want to speak, a trustee may ask you a question. So you might you know, please participate in that way. Okay, anybody with anything else to uh, discuss on the issue? Ben, anything to add? No. My understanding is that we are going to continue to table this motion until budget in November and that we, I, if Robert's rules is correct, or if no, I mean, if I understand Robert's rules, which I don't very well, we're going to defeat this motion and return to it during budget time. 
and that was my understanding. So I would advocate to defeat this vote. If this motion as printed is on the table, and I could be wrong, but that's my memory of where we left off, is to defeat this motion and return to it at a later date. Well, I made the motion to table, and it was for 30 to 60 days. Check. But I don't recall for sure. I didn't say we were. No, I, I'm not saying who right. said what. No, no, said. no. I know. I'm just, I just left with the feeling that we weren't going to pursue this. But maybe I'm wrong in that. Boz, can we go back to the beginning, kind of to and have, and I know I don't want to do this. And I, I was even thinking about asking all people present to sure. express their opinions again. But what I'm wondering from you is the why. Okay. Why are we why are we looking at this? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best well, to keep it brief. But uh, sure. <laughs> back in the September time frame. Uh, there was a, a discussion locally, Rapids, Saratoga, Nakusa, about assessments. That made us relook our numbers, not that forced it, but it, it started the dialogue. Relook our, our ab ability to assess was it fair, was it appropriate, does is it, is it make sense to change? Uh, we started doing some data mining at our level, at the village level, and all the documents that you see. Uh, a very slim portion of our village revenue is generated by assessments. That's just been years. Uh, at probably at no more, the biggest year we probably had was maybe a $10,000 input of our three and a half million dollar budget. So it's never been about money. And so at, that drove the discussion to, okay, is assessments required? Are they necessary? Are they worth all the, what I'll call hassle? of dealing with uh, the paperwork, the surveying, the citizen uh, uh, in engagement, uh, the, the mandatory meetings. Uh, is it worth all that or do we need to find a way to generate revenue is the real problem, not assessments. So that drove us down a path that in CERC meetings of let's look at ways that we can uh, innovatively figure out how to do assessments for the village. Wheel tax, infrastructure tax, uh, obviously, general levy tax um, and, and other options. That was presented in three or four CERC meetings and it started being shaped of, uh, oh, eliminate that way, let's talk about this. Uh, we went down a path of a wheel tax discussion that would generate probably in the 30 to $40,000 range. Uh, that kind of swayed back to this. And then in a discussion with the state, uh, with the League of Municipalities and other entities, the idea of a flat special assessment that basically eliminates a lot of the administration of it, but gets to the fact, the, the heart of fairness, uh, equitable, a very fair uh, portion of funds by the citizen compared to the village. Uh, we came up with what you see in front of you, a version of, of a flat assessment where it's cut across the board we have only two categories. You have large properties and you have 95% of the village. So 5%, 95%. So that's, you know, that's pretty, pretty fair. So uh, the 95% would pay a much prorated version in our calculations in the 15 to 20% range of the project that they are paying right now based on our current assessments. And that's what you saw before you here. The intent of this product over the past two and a half months now was this is just a menu of, of the recommendations from staff. Uh, it, we can adjust the numbers, we can eliminate line items, mill and overlay, get rid of it, ship and seal. So that was the intent from staff to y'all as a recommendation. Perfect world, the best option, this is what we are recommending as a staff. That's just the way I'm presenting it to you. But you're gonna take no. Uh, we're not taking any offense on our staff level of you guys line lining, red lining it, saying let's let's get rid of this. So uh, we came to this. Um, again, it's not about revenue. We don't generate revenue. Uh, it, it's it, do we need it to be successful in our village projects? No. The real problem in our village, and this is from past years and moving forward is we need to have a better understanding of how we fund our infrastructure projects 
how we can dedicate money annually towards those projects. And then we have the discussion, do we just take it on as a village with taxpayer money in general taxes, or do we have a process moving forward that there's a village portion and a citizen portion for any project? Hence assessments. Uh, we can eliminate that idea. It's just the village. Village will do this on our own dime using existing funds and no, no commitment by a citizen whatsoever. They can get a new street, a new sidewalk, a new curb and gutter, and we as a village will assume that, that charge and we'll find ways to fund it. Uh, the only concern we have as a staff is that just be understand that we do not have large buckets of money like other communities that we can take that project on consistently as a village and and do as many projects as we need to do to keep our roads and our network up to, up to speed. We will always be behind the curve. So the true problem is how do we find money to John's point, Mr. Bingham's point, how do we find money in the budget process at some capacity that we can consistently fund our streets and infrastructure so we can truly just look at our residents and say, we're going to take care of you as a village because you pay other things. We got it. And, but just understand, you're not going to get new streets every other year. Impossible. Uh, your sidewalks may be a little messed up for a few months, a few years. We'll get to it. That's just the understanding because we don't have a direct charge to our citizens. Hope that answers, summarizes. And realizing that we may be taking money from lots of other things and, and focusing it on infrastructure, but what if we take the money we get from the state and put that into- So, so we do that. Our By works. default, we kind of do that. Uh, we get a pot of money from state DOT uh, we get some funds from DNR, from other things that are tied to roads and infrastructure. They go into our, they go into our general fund. And at the end of the day, yeah, our, our $1.3 million public works budget is fed by some of these DOT funds. It's just, that's how it is. Is it lockboxed? DOT gives us $100,000 and I know $100,000 goes into streets and infrastructure? No, it's not. Would I like it to be that way? Damn right, I'd like it to be that way. Because then it gives me and Ben the consistency, the understanding that every year, $100,000, I don't care what else goes on the village, but we have $100,000 for streets. That's the budget discussion we gotta have this year and moving forward. How do we lockbox some of these items? Just understand there's a price of doing that. That $100,000 now is not going to the general fund, hence it could affect other things with payroll, with police hires, fire department, could affect other stuff. So. That's the juggling act we got to do as a village. It's not impossible. It's just an, it's it's just a process. Okay, I appreciate your overall. Yeah. We need to hear it again, all of us, I think. And Mr. President, I'd like to have comments from anybody else. Without objection, has... we can go off the table. Go ahead, Trustee Mitchell. Okay, I don't have any specific things for any of you. Do, are there any comments that you want to make? I, I do. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not looking. That's all, right. That's all right. The the thing that I think it's important to note at this point that maybe was misunderstood in the um, from some of the folks in the village, we're not having a budget crisis that we're now trying to figure out. And I think that there was some thought process like we, you know, we're short funded or we're um, did some misplanning, and I think it's important that we clarify that none of those things have anything to do with this conversation. I appreciate that comment. I, I'm glad you spoke up and said that, Tiara. That is important, an important point to make. Well, I would just come back, Madam Chairperson, that sure. it's a budget discussion. And we're so not in budget, to wait until... and that's my perspective at this particular point. Well, and I think Boz is in agreement. I thought I heard that Boz say too, that. In essence, yeah. yeah thank you. It's, it's a discussion of logistics and of well, how we manage. Timing. So, okay. Well, it's taken seven months, and uh, 
10 minutes so far. If everybody's, uh, that includes our citizens, uh, all talked out about this issue. And we have the motion, we have the second. You're going to have to go back and see the minutes from last month of who made the motion and who made the second, because I can't remember. But I am going to call for a roll call vote on this. Um, you know, before I'd ask the clerk to call the roll, Vice President Saylor, anything to add? Um, no, I think we've kind of beaten the horse. Um, I've been talking about it for a while. I think. It, I think eventually we can get to it. Well, I'm not going to sway anybody's votes, but we can talk about it in the future. Trustee Mitchell, anything further? Nope. I think I agree with Eric. I think we've gone through it. We're clear. Trustee Bingham? No, sir. Trustee Mansell? Nope. Trustee Duncan? Yes. Anything else to add? No. Trustee Brendan? Nothing. Okay, clerk, call the roll, please. Okay, Trustee Bingham. Uh, yeah, I got to look at the, we've, we've beat this. No, I guess. <laughs> okay, Trustee Duncan? Yes. Brendan? No. Trustee Mansell? No. Trustee Mitchell? No. Trustee Sam? No. Okay, uh, the vote was five to one. The motion did not pass. Okie dokie, Chairman Grundin, if we could go to public safety, please. All right, let's see. Well, I had to look at it. All right, so we had our meeting April 6th. There was a review of the fire department. Um, a monthly report and budget comparison. Um, there's an updated accounting methods that was shared to show the numbers of firefighters responding to each event. There are two applicants for new hires for the fire department and the interview process will begin. For the police department, there was a review of the monthly report and budget comparison. There is Continued focus on port road weight restrictions enforcement. Um, again, if residents observe semi trucks on port road, please call Wood County Dispatch so that if there's somebody available, they can respond swiftly. Otherwise, um, future agenda items, the discussion of NEPCO Lake Safety and Public Works Center, and the Rome Fire District update, which at this point, um, the consensus is that regarding the fire district, really as a village, it, we don't really have anything that we would need from them that it would benefit the village at this time. Our next meeting is May 4th at five o'clock. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Chairman Duncan, next for the Finance and Human Resource Committee. Oh. Planning. Pitt. Hmm? Sir, Pitt. Pitt. No. Yes. Uh -oh. well, data understood. He's chairman of both committees, so <laughs> they want the Pitt first data. Was on the end. Usually we have. Okay, I need the agenda up on the for pit first then, or the minutes, and then we can go back. Okay. Um, all right, we had our meeting last Thursday. Um, we had an update on the uh, Market Avenue property um, and what and the closing. Um, and I don't know if there's any further update that uh, Boz, you could share with us uh, as far as the closing of the property or not, but Yes, there is a, a phone call today with uh, him and his attorney. He's deciding not to uh, sell. So uh, uh, I, I alluded to him that the, the offer will still be on the table if he comes back and thinks twice about it. Uh, just made it very clear to him that understand that uh, all ordinances, rules, and regulations 
in the village will be enforced and immediately followed that with our lawyer and we'll, we'll move out that way. Why does that not surprise me? Anyway, uh, we discussed the condo association. Really, that's a dead issue. We're basically going forward with figuring out what needs to be done. There'll be an up uh, as far as ordinances and conversations with the property owners will be going on to that. We had a brief update with D or regarding DMI and uh, uh, what was likely to be discussed, which is what Joel Moore presented today. Um, uh, there was um, a recommendation for the rezoning approval of the DMI property at B1, B2, M2 to uh, PUD. Um, and that's about it, other than if um, uh, we do not have anything of any substance to discuss, uh, I'm going to be looking at the agenda and discussing it with Boz and uh, figuring out whether we actually need to have a meeting or not. Um, and I'll be letting everybody know a week in advance as to whether there's a need for it. If it's just updates, I don't see that really the need for scheduling or having a meeting just to have what we could all read. So, um, all right. Chairman Duncan, you would send out an email though? Or yep. Something? If you don't have a meeting, thank you. Yep, I'll take care of that. So um, then uh, FHR, um, again, we had a motion to approve the bills. We had a brief discussion regarding the rescue funds and the availability of those and what we're going to do. Uh, we also discussed options as far as the sanitation department. We'll have more information at the next meeting. Um, very preliminary information as far as bank loans, options, and such. Um, and uh, we'll be having more information as the next one comes along. Nothing any more significant than that. Um, that's about the extent of it. We did meet, like I said, it was last Thursday we met. So um, I guess as far as I, that goes, uh, no news is good news. And um, that's it for both of my meetings. Mr. Duncan. Yes, sir. Is that rescue money allocation staying with FHR for the next meeting? I think yes. And then we'll figure out from there where we're going with it. Cause we're right now just trying to figure out what we have to work with to start. And then we'll address it at that point. Thank you. Okay. Um... Under item H, pending the Parks and Recreation Committee, uh, Chairman Mitchell, thank you very much for that uh, comment about uh, your committee is in favor of the uh, separation. It's kind of like a child leaving home, I guess, after they go off to college or whatever. So uh, that will be uh, voted on. Uh, the standing committees will all be voted on, and that'll be one of them. Uh, at next Tuesday's meeting at six o'clock reorganizational meeting and that is reorganizational matters only no village business is conducted at that meeting solely reorganization uh, that will be uh, parks committee uh, technically the special projects committee is not pending I've already uh, set them to meet and that will expire in December of 2023 and at that time a new president will decide whether it's needed or not needed so Pretty much it there. Unfinished business. New business. Can I speak to that next week thing, if you don't mind? Pardon, sir? Can I speak to the next week thing, if you don't mind? Uh, yes, sir. 20. So the president has a meeting at eight or six o'clock for uh, for y'all trustees, uh, committee of the whole. Uh, there'll be president business being conducted there. Agenda will be published on Friday. Uh, following that, we'll take a, a break. Following that is what we're going to call the uh, the annual strategic meeting for the village. The intent is for seven trustees, four invited guests. Right now, uh, I'm leaving my department heads by exception only, just mainly just because of the, the, the room set up because of our invited guests and the restrictions we may have. Uh, the intent will be that night a strategic meeting to discuss uh, mission vision, Nepco Lake, uh, some of the uh, ARP discussion, uh, Ameri uh, Rescue America, and uh, there's one other topic that eludes 
you. But that again, that agenda will go out. We will have food on site. Uh, so there's no need to either eat before or leave afterwards because we plan to be here uh, probably until the 8.30, 9 o'clock time frame, just to be honest with you. Just so we can get some good work done as a group and uh, especially with our special guests, Erko president or uh, Dale will be here. Um, uh, school superintendent will be here and we invited uh, some other uh, uh, zoning and planning commission chief uh, from the county and so on to help with our discussion as a village when it comes to the future in the five and 10 years. So we're all kind of on the same page moving forward. So that's the plan for next week, uh, right after his meeting. So that's you're on a roll, sir, and you're up next. Go all right, administrator. Uh, we'll zip through this one. Uh, no big burning issues. The big thing on us is vaccination is hovering in the 40% range now as of today. So that's a good thing just based on our numbers from the, the uh, uh, what do you call it, the health department. Um, and, and obviously that rescue, uh, America Rescue Plan, ARP is what, if you hear that term, ARP is what they're calling it, uh, America Rescue Plan. So that'll be a big thing. No changes in our human resources or payroll goes well. Uh, we mentioned here some of our summer help will start coming on the books here shortly. Uh, public Works, the big projects here, Third Street will be floating up through CERT committee for final contract approval. And then the board will approve the contract for execution at the next meeting. Uh, First Street repairs and uh, resurfacing will be the next major project coming into the summer months. And then the north side of our bike trail, the one mile from uh, your bunker north, right, Ben? Uh, Bruner Avenue to Seneca. Bruner right? Seneca, yeah. So uh, that'll be addressed uh, to get that resurfaced and get all the bumps out of that road. Um, still waiting on some information from uh, Saratoga and Grand Rapids on our town line road commitment. They're in the lead. Uh, but we're going to be still in the approval process to, to execute that. We will be getting some signage placed up in the village based on the money given to us by county. The intent here is to expand the existing signage, get it more uniform in the county, so they all kind of look the same when you're going on the network throughout the county. It'll be a brownish type color like you're used to seeing on like state parks and stuff. And uh, it'll be on a wooden post. So it'll be a little bit more fancier, but uh, It'll address where our highlights, and we control that. We'll point to Ripple Creek. We'll point to the, the, the churches. We'll point to the schools and that type of stuff. So anyone walking will have a better sense of where they are in our community, mainly for our guests that travel through here from Rapids and the Coosa. So, uh, nothing with our big, with our safety. Uh, we're working uh, some grants, some signage, and some other grants with our police and fire budget. No burning issues there. We are talking the loan for our deficit. We are still hovering at four work study students from mid state that are helping us with special projects. Uh, nothing new there. You see your most recent COVID numbers. You know, we have no active cases in Port Edwards right now. There's no active cases in the school system right now. So that's good news. And there's your numbers you see right there. And as a whole, Wisconsin is doing pretty well. We are now up to 16 and above is the category. So it's a big chunk of the population. Uh, that's allowed to get uh, vaccine vaccines and unless you have a question that's all that's it sir. oh okay i'm sorry um just out of curiosity how many of the uh visitors today are, are citizens have been vaccinated first shot second shot nobody no okay i'm done okay clerk treasure please okay nothing nobody? okay everybody got their election papers so we can show people we really did win uh God, I got to quit joking around, Chief. My jokes are not going anywhere. Ben, is there anything you want to add on anything? No. No. Okay, trustee comments. Anything? Yes, Jack. I continue to hear from residents and non residents about the road west of the airport full of potholes. And I tell them, and I know them personally, so I say it's a low priority, folks. It's a very low priority. Skip, miss when you drive. I do know that we're policing it. They said they saw one of our offices. I said, that's good. Just because we police it doesn't mean we're going to fix it. 
And I say that, I know these people, but they're saying, fix those potholes out there. I go, I, we don't really want the freaking road, but uh, it is what it is. I just thought I would share that. Maybe it's coming from non-residents that use it for a shortcut to work. So I just sharing for whatever it's worth. Probably 90% Saratoga people, 10% Rapids people, and zero Port Edwards people. Uh, you're probably right on, Mr. President. So I just, I, yeah. I suggested to the, to Boz that maybe the police department could put plastic in the trunk and some hot mix and a shovel. And uh, he just laughed and walked away and Chief drew down on me. So I knew that was going well, on. Well, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Nobody, okie dokie. Uh, you want to explain a little bit, Boz, about the committee calendar? We'll go over that in detail next week pretty well. Yeah, so all the dates from Public Works down, I'm just going off the standing days until you new chairman tell us next Tuesday, I will adjust that. So these are just placeholders so our, our staff and our citizens can plan. But I would ask, come to next Tuesday's meeting with your, your routine. Uh, your schedule so I can uh, quickly update and get that word out. Um, are you ready to send that out for me? Yeah, yeah I was waiting for Friday. We can send it tomorrow. Sure. Okay, I've asked Boss to send out, unlike other years, I'm going to release it only because of COVID and all this other stuff. It's important, and, and these meetings are, are set, one of them, uh, Public Works, the day after the uh, reorganizational meeting. So tomorrow you'll be getting an email. Uh, Boz will be releasing the uh, uh, agenda, which will have on there the standing committees, of course, and then the uh, those will be nominations for me and must be approved by the board, and then it'll, the other committees and uh, boards and commissions are, are appointments, but they will let you know who I'm putting into those different, and they're all uh, re-ups uh, for those other boards like Planning Commission and Police and fire are all repeat. So um, watch for the email. And uh, I have uh, asked Boss also to, uh, if he has anything he wants to add to it. Um, otherwise, I think this first year um, has gone pretty well with him here. And um, I've already told him that I like giving him comments because they are earned. But that does not, see, he's writing down now to ask at budget time, John, for his, his pay raise because the president said he's doing such a good job. But he is. We'll so, take care of that. Okay, thanks, John. <laughs> um, Being the same pile of <laughs> Okay. My dad always told me I talk too much, it's going to get me in trouble. So for this, I will take a motion to adjourn the meeting. Oh, John? Um, I don't know what committee I'll end up on. But during April and May, I'll just share that I have I have no availability at four and five o'clock. I'm coaching till five thirty, so if I'm on a committee, we're going to have to fill. I mean, is this for those two months? After that, I'm good. But is it the prerogative of the chair to adjust that, Mr. President? Yep, that's that's your. Biggest, I'd like to biggest. meet like the county board at noon with lunch. On the village, so would I. I've been with health benefits for eight years already. I no, I, no, I'm I'm kidding about. Well, I'm not really kidding. Maybe we could meet it, mm -hmm. but no, seriously, I, I'm just expressing. I don't know where I'm going to end up, but if I'm on a committee that starts at four, I can't do it. The only thing I caution you, uh, the members of this board, is don't call one another and start discussing because if you get two people talking that find out they're going to be on the same committee, that becomes a negative quorum. I mean, it's it's gibberish what you're going to be talking about anyway. You know, yeah, you know, this, that, and the other thing. But your best just to refrain from comment. Sure. So. Okay. I just thought I, for whatever, I'm probably the only one. I don't know if other people start at four. Yeah, uh, setting the times and all that stuff. Uh, the only thing that I suggested way back when was to try and keep it the same uh, day, month in and month right. out. Right. No, I agree with that, sir. All righty. Take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mitchell, second by Trustee Duncan. I like this. We're adjourned. Thank you.